Hello, this is Mark Gallucci with Digital Control Incorporated. This video is going to detail the data log and its submenus. We're currently viewing the main menu of the Digitrack F5 locator. So I'm going to use my thumb switch. I'm going to thumb it down, thumb it down again. And now we reside on the data log menu icon. We'll go ahead and click that trigger. Now we're viewing the six submenus associated with the data log. And we'll start here at the setup job. That icon is highlighted. We'll click the trigger. We get an additional two menus. We'll slide it over. This is where we create a new job. And note the job number 24. That's important. You take note of that. The receiver will automatically increment the job number by one every time we highlight this icon. Let's go ahead and click the trigger. To set up a new job, we need to provide a couple of bits of information. The first being the length of the drill pipe you're using. As you can see, right now this is set for a 120 inch drill pipe, 10 foot drill pipe. It's loaded an inch because previously this locator, its settings were set to read depth in inches only. Had we set the depth to for feet and inches, I could load this thing simply as 10 foot. But we're in inches only mode, so we're going to load it in inches only. I'll slide it over just to give you an example. Click the 1, slide it to the 2, click it, down to the 0, click it, 120 inches. That is correct. If so, enter key, highlight it, and click. Okay, next bit of information we're looking for. We need to tell it the first rod length. And so what that is, that is the difference of this space right here, the difference between the drive chuck and the jaws or the vices. That is what we're looking for you to enter right here. Now, it's also important to note, we take that measurement only after we've positioned the housing so that 50% of the slots in that housing are above ground and 50% of the slots are below ground. At that point, we stop. We get our tape measure out and we now measure behind the vices to the front of the drive chuck. By default, the receiver puts a number in here that is 70% of your drill pipe length. 70% of 120 inches is 84 inches. Had I loaded 180 inch drill pipe, a 15 foot rod previously, this number would be 70% of 180. So let's just say we, we, we positioned our housing correctly, we have our tape measure out and we measure that and that number wasn't 84, it was uh, 80. We can modify that, slide over to the keypad, click the trigger, slide to 8 and then 0. There's my 80 inches, that is correct. Back to the enter key, click the trigger. And now we've just modified that first rod, rod length to 80 inches. Let's continue back to that menu, the setup menu. And now we'll talk about appending an existing job. So you're going to append an existing job when you, you had to stop midway through the job. Last night we were working on job number 24. We could not finish that job for whatever reason. We came back the next day and we want to continue data logging job number 24. Highlight the job number you'd like, click the trigger, and now we're able to continue adding data to that specific job number. I'll thumb that out. Next up, uploading a job. I'm not going to do that here. There is another video that you can watch that will detail data logging. From taking the data while you're drilling, to uploading the information to your computer, to opening the software program and then using that information to generate graphs and reports and of course send them on to the necessary parties. But that is where you upload the jobs and that is done through a Bluetooth device. Next, delete data log. Let's click that. You are going to have to delete data log jobs. The F5 Digitrack receiver has capacity to store 20 data log jobs to store 20 fluid pressure data log jobs, to store 20 SST steering tool jobs. So it'll store a combined 60 jobs, but only 20 of each. 
Once we reach capacity and you continue to log information, you're going to be storing over older jobs. So it is important, very important, that you get in here, you upload those jobs, get them on your computer, and get back in here and delete the jobs that are no longer needed to be stored. So I have two options here. I can highlight that and I can delete every single job that's stored. Or I can get over here and just delete one. Let's go ahead and click that. Let's say I want to delete job 24. Highlight it, click it. Are you sure? If you are sure, thumb it to the right and click the trigger. I've just deleted all records for job 24. Once that information is deleted, there is no way to go back and get it. Once it's deleted, it's gone forever. So again, please make sure that you've uploaded the correct job number to your computer before you delete. We'll slide over here. This icon is merely the on off button. As you see now, it says it's enabled. So the Digitrack receiver is capable of data logging. Should I click it? Now it's disabled. I've turned off the data log function. I'll go ahead and click that again. Okay, now we're able to data log once again. We'll slide it to the right. Add survey point. Let's click that. Again, you need to know the specific job number that you'd like to add a survey point to. Let's just grab job 20 because it's highlighted. So what we're looking for here, we're looking for the relative elevation change from where we enter the ground and where we exit the ground. So where we enter the ground, once again, is that position where the housing slots are 50% below the ground and 50% above the ground. On the exit side, you'll, you'll stop right there again, 50% above the ground, 50% below the ground. So the difference between the entry and the exit point, we're asking for that elevation change. For instance, if I exited the ground six foot lower than I entered the ground, I'll get to this keypad as we are now, click the trigger. Six foot, again, I have to load it in inches as it says here. I'll slide that over to seven up to two, 72 inches. Oh, I made a mistake. You know why I made a mistake? We were lower, so I did not put the minus in there. You make a mistake, you merely get to that X and click. And click again, now I'll slide back over. Grab the minus, seven, two. Enter, click it. Okay, so I've just loaded that survey point. I've told the info, I've given it the information that we exited the ground 72 inches lower than where we entered the ground. You will also have the ability to load that survey point once you have your log uploaded to the computer and you open the software there's a place in that software where you can also add a survey point. Lastly, we'll just view a data log. Again, those are all the jobs that are currently saved on this receiver. Let's just grab one of them for a quick view. Here we are. This is what you're going to view when you view data log. You get your rod number followed by your position. That is your lineal distance out from where we started. Notice it is in inches. Your depth, that is your below ground depth. Relative depth, well that is the distance from where your transmitter is to where we entered the ground. So it's not, doesn't, you know, it's not below ground depth, it's the relative distance between where we enter the ground and where the transmitter is. Lastly, we have the pitch information. Okay, so there you go. Those are all the menus associated with data log. Again, look for other videos that go into more detail with regard to taking the data log information, uploading it, and then creating your graphs and reports.